Hello, welcome to this presentation. My name is Markus Hummel. I work for eThink Energy Research uh, in Vienna. I'm part of the Act on Heat project team. And I will tell you in this presentation about support facility one in course of the Act on Heat project. It deals with strategic heat plans and transition roadmap development. So I will show you an overview of the support facility topics. So what are the concrete topics uh, we treat here? Um, I also want to show you some examples of some potential support uh, that is provided by the project team to you as an applicant. Um, the division, the understanding of the different types of support. So we divide it between individual support and group support activities and Finally, what we need from participants, because also we need to report um, to the Commission what we have done. In this figure, you see the workflow of heating and cooling planning that has been developed in the project, uh, in the first part of the Act on Heat project. What you see is um, the different phases, you see everything starts somehow with a vision and a commitment that heating and cooling systems have to be changed. A working group should be installed and then first analysis. So this first red cycle is gone through, which means we're going to develop inventory and potentials, analyze inventory and potentials, think about zoning, so different things, different changes that could be followed in different parts of the area, develop scenarios, and in the end, come up with the heating cooling transition strategy. And then when we have that, we define policies and measures how to implement that. And then we come to the implementation cycle, which starts with the project feasibility study, project planning, project implementation. Um, yes. and. Um, so for each measure that we have defined, that ha has to be implemented. In the end, we are also going to monitor that development. So there will always be a review, a report, an upscale, a rethinking. So that's why we always have those loops. So it's an ongoing process um, that is actually not going to stop until the system is changed and potentially not even then because the system might always be under change. In uh, course of the Act on Heat project, we offer two support facilities, support facility one. Support facility one is focusing on this red cycle up here, while support facility two then is focusing on the project feasibility studies. So project, uh, so support facility number one, focusing on that part, so we're, trying to assist you in all of those steps up here with a certain focus on scenarios, zoning, inventory potentials, and the heating cooling strategy development in total. We also um, have one analytic, analytical tool um, that we propose to use in cases when this makes sense, also from the applicant setting, which is the Hotmaps toolbox, an open source toolbox developed for exactly that part of heating cooling planning. Um, and that can be used in those three boxes here. So in the inventory and potential section, in the zoning section, the scenario development section. So now going into those different uh, parts, just uh, to to, to show you how we structured it also according to those different um, uh, parts of this planning cycle. So we have one module, heat cold transition strategy. So it's an overall module where we could focus, for example, on starting a strategic heating and cooling planning, focus more on the renovation strategies of the stock or um, development of the entire strategy for the city or the region. 
we focus more, for example, on this specific part on inventory and potentials, we could, for example, um, develop a stock and heat cold demand inventory. Um, we could assist in analyzing renewable potentials, excess heat or waste heat potentials, saving potentials. So those are the different topics that are treated when you do a heating cooling planning, we could focus on certain aspects of those. In the zoning, um, of course, we could also focus on different approaches for zoning. Um, and uh, yeah, if you have here specific questions, specific tasks on the agenda, we could focus on that and see how we can assist here. Or we focus on the overall scenario development, whether we focus on how to come up with scenarios for certain parts. So, for example, for the district heating system or more for individual single types of buildings or <clears throat> overall in which uh, um, parameters should be taken into account and varied and, and which sensitivities should be there, which default data do you have or do you not have. Here overall, um, so that was the topic wise overview of uh, how we could assist and where we assist here, you see potential activities uh, that we could do um, for you as an applicant. So we could, for example, give you an introduction into the topic with background information for the links. We could organize guided exchange rounds with best practice presentations and links. We could also check the individual situation and um, yeah, recommend further steps to be done, compile missing data and individualize them for further analysis. So if there is data that uh, you're missing for a certain part of the analysis, we could think of um, data that is out there that you might not know uh, and compile that. Um, we could also assist you in setting up an analysis framework or validation of existing re results or also start with drafting of guiding documents for concrete steps forward or drafting of text elements for tendering part of the activities. So in many cases, potentially you as an applicant as for example, as a, 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 a municipality, you might not do a detailed analysis on your own, but you might want to find an external service provider to do that. So we could assist you in coming up with how to formulate such a call. Here are two examples of support provided within the first call uh, of the Act on Heat support facility. Number one. One example is that we're compiling the legislation of municipal heat planning in the German federal state of Baden-Württemberg. So in that state, it is already um, <clears throat> a law existing uh, that obliges municipalities above a certain size to do heating and cooling planning, to do municipal heating and cooling planning. So, and um, there uh, is also um, a guidance on, um, I mean, on the one hand, there is the law, what needs to be done. On the other hand, there is guidance on how to, and on which exact steps should be done for the case of Baden-Württemberg. So what we do for a different region in Germany is to compile that information and to prepare it so that municipalities from, a, from another region can use that and we organize, uh, uh, we develop guidelines and also a workshop to present and discuss it with the municipalities in the other German region. Another thing that we do, another task is uh, we introduce to setting up an industrial access heat cadaster. So we start a very first analysis based on selected local da data for the region of an applicant, uh, integrate that into the hotmaps toolbox. Um, and then we transfer the knowledge how to perform that, which data is needed, um, how to visualize that in the Hotmaps toolbox and also in other tools, and then define a way forward for finding an external service provider to perform a detailed access heat analysis. 
as I mentioned in the beginning, we have two types of support that we offer. First one is group support activities. Second is an individual support activity. The two examples that you've heard are both in course of the individual support activities. So there you will have one supporting partner from the entire Act on Heat project for each applicant. Um, and we define the exact individual support before the start of support. <clears throat> and we do that um, in course of, we call them ramp up calls. I will come back to that. And we also offer group support activities. So that's where you can choose out of three webinars that we prepare. Um, <clears throat> and uh, we try to to implement those webinars as individual as possible. So based on the needs formulated by the different applicants, why group support? Because we, we then have different applicants from the same call in those webinars. And um, also importantly, we try to have an exchange between the applicants. So those interactive webinars, just that you have a little bit more idea about them, they will take around one and a half to two hours. Um, we try to see what are common needs between the different applicants to formulate the topics and the setting up of the webinars. Potentially small presentations and experience sharing from applicants can be included if there is interest. We are going to have interactive discussions. And um, of course, we need your inputs to define them. For the first round uh, of support, uh, facility one, so for the first uh, implementation, we have the following three uh, webinar topics defined based on the needs of the applicants. The first one is how to find data needed for strategic heat planning. So if there is data needed and you don't have it locally, uh, but already want to, of course, uh, start with, uh, uh, with the heat planning, how can you fill those data gaps? Webinar two is development of a data inventory for heat planning. And here we focus on best practice examples that uh, not only um, set up such an inventory, um, let's say as a standalone um, database, but um, we focus on how to do that so that the database can be filled more and more with life also after the project has ended of setting up a first data inventory. So how to come up with automated data inventory generation and use of that database then for different purposes. And the third one is the use of hot maps for strategic heat planning, which is an introduction to the hot maps tool, a short introduction, how to use it. Individual support, uh, as I said, we're going to define that lastly in the ramp up calls. Um, however, in the application process to apply for the support facility number one, uh, you will fill out an application form. And in that application form, you will already provide inputs about your individual situation, uh, about the current state uh, of your knowledge, of your uh, yeah, your local circumstances plus also your main interests that will then help us in the call and in the definition of the individual support that we might do. And uh, based on those ramp up calls, we are going to formulate the collaboration agreement that is iterated between applicants and the Act on Heat team so that we define exactly what is going to be the assistance. And then, so what could be potential discussion points for the ramp up call? Of course, the policy agenda at the location of the applicant. So what is going on? What's our, what are the next steps politically to be taken? Um, status of data, um, status of knowledge um, that is already there, um, concrete needs, of course, and then um, ideas of how um, the project team can 
can assist in one or the other field. Lastly, what we need from the participants, as I said, um, and as you might know, this project is funded by the European Commission. So uh, we have also as a project um, key performance indicators to fulfill, to report to the Commission. Um, and the main uh, or one of the main uh, key performance indicators for support facility number one are the number of municipalities that we are assisting uh, in course of the project. So what we need is fact sheets stating concrete municipalities that will profit from the received support. So <clears throat> we start actually with this collaboration agreement that I have spoken, where we have the parties, the support activities and the workflow and data defined. And then at the end, uh, we need such fact sheets. So where we state concrete municipalities. Um, and of course, uh, the more municipalities uh, we uh, can, uh, that can profit from the support that we give you as an applicant. So if you are, for example, working with several municipalities and we can show that what we have done uh, as a support, supporting you, um, is uh, useful for a number of municipalities, then we can, of course, also do a little bit more intensive individual support. And then in the end, for the individual support, we need letters describing that individual support. Um, and that's the only thing. So where we have a description of the assistance that has taken place, and this is the only, uh, the only document that needs to be signed in the end. If you have further question, questions, please reach out to the Acton Heat team, to the info mail and the help desk. Um, yeah, I hope this is interesting for you. Looking forward to receive your application.